never snows in town, so when you see snow at the bottom of the hill, that means it's time to go shred the gnar. Today we're headed up to Coronet Peak to check out the powder situation. It normally takes us about 20 minutes to get to the top from town, as long as the bus doesn't have to stop to put chains on. What are chains, you ask? That's exactly how it sounds. It's like installing winter tires and then taking them off when there's no more snow. So they are actually just chains that you put on the tires. Now I'm not a pro snowboarder or anything, but here's a tip. The struggle is that it's often tough to get the laces tight enough. So here's how to get those puppies real tight. Twist them together and wrap one side around the loop so you have leverage to tighten the other side. Next important step is to grab your crew, strap in, and make your way to the chairlifts. If you're really close to the lodge where you can grab a coffee and bath. I've never seen a system quite like this where you're served up on a platter to the chairlift. So be careful if your gear is freshly waxed. You don't want to make a lifty come dig you out of the ditch. I could barely see where I was going on this lap, so it's nice to be able to follow someone down. Make sure you have the right lenses in in case there's poor visibility. It's not so nice getting snow in your eyeballs either, so we took it pretty slow on this lap. Receiving about only two meters of snow per year, Coronet Peak boasts most guns in the southern hemisphere, which is impressive. And that's the trade-off for getting the feeling of riding in spring weather most of the season. It rarely falls below negative 10 degrees at the top. There's heaps more terrain to explore than usual when you head up on a good day to Green Gates, which is an intermediate slash expert run. We got lucky that the viz cleared so we didn't fall off of the cliff. Yeah! After a year, it's easy to forget that powder is challenging for the legs, so <laughs> lean back and pump so you don't get eaten by the fluffy white stuff. We both ate shit a few times. I say you're just not shredding hard enough if you're not falling. Coming up the side, yeah. After working in a kitchen, you learn the value of announcing yourself so someone doesn't suddenly turn around and burn you or cut you. <whistles> July and August get the most simultaneous bluebird and powder days, so I recommend getting your butt down here during one of those months to experience some good times. As staff, you get to store your gear in the locker rooms for free. There's other paid spots you can keep your stuff, but most people just leave their things out in the open. That's how safe it is here. The worst that might happen is that someone takes your gear on accident or tries to punk you. The buses are available every half hour after lunch, so you can enjoy the views and get up and down the hill worry-free. So get out there and have a good ride! That was really cheesy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>